kandana na muvule ya makuwa na otu umbanda atuwa vindele tuwa mbangu wa hand sanitizer ushimbu na shimbu Ngwe mnevu ngwe mna kubiza kandana mwenye kalu wala chiku vwale nungia kumikinga kuli o msongo wa coronavirus today has killed more than 490,000 people globally, infecting over 9.7 million people, has affected several industries, including sporting activities and events and institutions in a manner never seen before. Lives have been lost, income has been affected, and life as we know it on the sporting side has completely been distorted. Today, on coronavirus and you, we look at how the Zambia Judo Association, ZJ, ZJA, is fighting COVID-19. How has Zambia Judo Association responded to the presidential directive to ensure wearing masks is mandatory? To help me answer this, and many other interesting questions. I have the president of the National Olympic Committee of Zambia, who is also the president of the Zambia Judo Association, president of the Southern Africa Judo Association, and also serving as sports director in the African, African Judo Union. Allow me to welcome Mr. Alfred Poloko. So welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Doc, and uh, thank you for the viewers. Um, you are free to call this program. Immediately we begin the discussion. The number is appearing on your screen or will be appearing on your screen or you can also text it. Alternatively, you can find this program live on YouTube. Just search for Prism Africa or on Facebook. Search for my name if you can't find Prism Africa on Facebook and uh, you will be linked to our live discussion uh, today. President Foloko, this week the Olympic family Worldwide has been celebrating Olympic Day as NOC, National Olympic Committee of Zambia. What is the significance of this particular day? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doc. Before I can uh, give the significance of this uh, day to the National Olympic Committee of Zambia, allow me to draw our viewers, listeners, and uh, our colleagues around Zambia, including the media that uh, this day was back in 1948. Mm -hmm. uh, this is in, to commemorate the birth of the modern Olympic Games. Uh, you may wish to know that the modern day Olympic Games 
uh, was built in uh, 1894 mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Sorbonne, uh, Paris. Yeah. And uh, this actually was the, the initiative of the 12 countries that came together to support the idea of uh, Pierre de Coubertin, uh, that's a French name, yeah. uh, to ensure that uh, the modern Olympics uh, are born. That was 1894. Uh, and later, uh, two years later, in the 1896, we had the first Olympic, modern Olympic Games. Two, uh, two, that's two, two years, years after the formation, after of, the formation IOC. of IOC. And uh, we had the, the Games in the Athens in Greece. Wow. And of course, uh, later in 1948, mm -hmm. uh, this day, uh, nine actually uh, Olympic committees, mm -hmm. interestingly, came together and said, let's celebrate this day just to remember the, the birth of the modern Olympics. Uh, the ancient Olympics, just to quick, uh, yeah. quickly touch base on that, so that our people uh, may know the history. We had the ancient uh, games, actually, that happened in, uh, were happening in Greece, and uh, the modern Olympics, that's why I maintain the four-year cycle, mm -hmm. to ensure that they respect the, the ancient games, the ancient games that actually ran from about uh, 1880, uh, 8th century BC to about uh, 4th century AD. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the history of the, the games and the Olympic day. So the, these are anchored on the, the Olympic day is anchored on the three pillars. The three pillars in that we have the, its move. This is where we encourage and invite all athletes, or all, all athletes, fans, Olympians mm. to make a move to participate in any form of sport of your choice. Yeah. To this is of course uh, has been recognized by the World Health Organization, mm -hmm. the UN, as we are looking for the Agenda 3030 mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, your well-being of uh, human beings, the well-being of Zambians, uh, we are at the future of Zambia. Yeah. So uh, looking for the health of Zambia. Mm -hmm. So all of us must stay healthy for us to have a prosperous Zambia. Absolutely. And if you look at the pillars to learn, to learn is to ensure in the spirit of Olympism that we learn things, of course, such as the uh, Olympic values, we have uh, uh, human trafficking now, mm -hmm. we have to deal with issues to do with the HIV and AIDS, mm -hmm. we have to do with the issues to do with the world peace. Yeah. We have to do uh, to deal with issues such as uh, the protection of the environment. Mm -hmm. So all these are things that we have to learn. So not only about uh, coming to play football, coming to judo, mm -hmm. coming to do boxing. No, the Olymp Olympism education uh, anchors on a lot of issues that affect mm. each and every. These are societal issues actually. That's right. And uh, the world in which we want. The, the word in which we yeah. went. So how was the celebration of, uh, this This happened on the 23rd of uh, June, and I'm glad that um, OIDC actively participated in this. How was the celebration, how were the celebrations affected by the coronavirus? Uh, the coronavirus has not spared anyone. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, this is the darkest time of our history in terms of sport. Yes. Uh, you may wish to know that uh, the coronavirus affected the Olympic Games, the Tokyo Olympic Games themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they had to be moved. And uh, it has uh, changed, uh, I think fundamentally changed our lives in that uh, athletes are also affected, uh, that they can't train the way they, 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 they are supposed to, to train. Yeah. And uh, in this, for the first time, we are celebrating the visual Olympic. <laughs> Virtually. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, we encourage the athletes, Olympians, sports fans across the country to celebrate in the comfort of their homes. Mm -hmm. And this is what actually happened. It mm -hmm. was very successful. We had the more than 100 people uh, participate in our Olympic virtual day. Absolutely. Uh, these, of course, the uh, core values of this um, day, of course, we are talking of excellency, uh, respect, and, of course, uh, we are saying uh, friendship. 
excellency in that uh, we do not only practice excellency in the field of play. Excellence must be practiced in our professional life. That's right. And uh, these are values that uh, during this time, our Olympic movement is going out there to ensure that uh, uh, people within our country in Zambia know about these Olympic values mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, they're not only anchoring in sport. That's right. Yeah. I, I know this program is about what judo is doing in as far as fighting coronavirus is concerned, but just briefly, maybe a minute, tell us what NOC is, is doing uh, in this particular regard. Thank you very much. As the, the Olympic Committee of Zambia, uh, you may wish to know that uh, all those thousands of dollars announced by the IOC mm -hmm. and uh, that they will deal with the country-to-country -country problem in uh, helping or uh, giving a package to support the fight against COVID-19, we have not yet received a Zambia. Yeah. And also, um, uh, we have a meeting actually uh, on Tuesday with the ANOCA, mm -hmm. this uh, webinar meeting, where we want to press as a region, as COSANO, which are the 10 SADC countries yes. on the issues of uh, COVID package. Uh, once we get the answer and I know they are treating country by country and I know maybe they've started with our colleagues who are most affected, right. like Italy, Spain, mm -hmm. uh, the US, I know they've started with those, but that has not yet reached uh, our NOC as Zambia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are talking of 206 NOCs now that are also looking to get that package. However, uh, with uh, the little resources, we still ensured that uh, we came to the aid of our uh, affiliates. Uh, you may wish to know that we've distributed the hand centers, hand washing, soaps, uh, reusable masks, mm -hmm. to, um, in fact, uh, all the communities around Olympia Africa, where our offices are, mm -hmm. the secretary, which is housing our secretariat. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, we've extended this under OIDC, where yes. you are the center mm. director, to ensure that uh, we've distributed within the communities that surround OIDC. Absolutely. I think this is the message we are sending as an Olympic movement that uh, uh, we cannot be active or we cannot only be known when there's the sports activities, when we are going to our key stakeholders to ask for support uh, during this uh, COVID-19. Mm. But we've ensured that uh, uh, during this pandemic, we also help come to the aid of the government to ensure that we place resources available to the people or the communities, especially the underprivileged. Mm -hmm. And these are communities surrounding the OIDC, the communities surrounding the Olympia Africa Center. Thank you. Uh, this is Coronavirus and You, and today I'm featuring the president of NOCZ, Mr. Foloko, who is also the president of the Zambia Judo Association, as well as sitting on the African Judo Union, where he serves as sports director, as well as a president of the Southern Africa, um, let me just say it correctly, Southern Africa Judo Association. Now, sir, uh, you are, you are the president of uh, Zambia Judo Association, and recently you just opened the secretariat at the OIDC, and I don't think we have so many NFs, National Sports Federations, that have the privilege of having a, a secretariat like, like yours with members of staff in there. Uh, let me just say congratulations and, uh, and well done. It's a very good example you have said to several other uh, federations. Um, I, I want to now zero in to what judo is doing. But before that, um, I, I want to be educated and I want my viewers out there to be educated, those who are following us on Facebook and also those who are watching us live on TV. What is the Judo for Peace program and uh, what is the Judo for All program? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I know uh, I need to put these things together. Yeah. The, <laughs> Uh, National Olympic Committee and the Judo Association of Zambia. Yeah. I recall when I was going to elections, others were saying, why can't you resign as Judo president? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not the only uh, Judo president or a federation president that is uh, sitting in as the National Olympic Committee president. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, all colleagues around the world. Actually, you cannot divorce judo from the Olympic movement. I think this is uh, in line with the history mm -hmm. of the founder of judo, Professor Jigoro Kano. Uh, remember, he was the first Asian to sit on the IOC board. That's right. So the judo values are most similar with the uh, IOC or Olympism uh, values. Mm -hmm. And uh, all centers on the uh, saving of humanity. Yeah and uh, what contribution we give to society. And if you check with UNESCO, and of course the uh, UN sport, you agree with me that today they have recognized that uh, judo is one of the most educative Olympic sport. And uh, this is in line with the, 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 the values. Mm -hmm. That's why we call judo is the way of life. And uh, you realize that now most of the judo president are also serving as the NOC president, That's including right. uh, our Russian President Putin, who is our honorary International Judo Federation President, mm -hmm. we have our colleagues, uh, my brother, friend, the Mongolia Republican President, who is also serving as Judo President of Mongolia. Oh, really? We have the uh, Madagascar President, uh, Chad President, uh, uh, Guinea Bissau President. Is that country national president? Uh, uh, who are also serving as a uh, the judo presidents. Oh, wow. Now we have uh, NOC presidents who are also serving as uh, judo presidents. Uh, judo presidents. Mm. So uh, I think these are values that we've learned through the education values that we've learned, the judo values. And uh, in these values, one of them is friendship. And for us, friendship goes beyond borders. Mm -hmm. For us as judo, friendship goes beyond our gender, our athletic ability, mm -hmm. race, and religion. And uh, this birthed the Judo for Peace Commission of the International Judo Federation. Yeah. And uh, Zambia took advantage of that in our eight year strategic plan, business strategic plan that we put in place. We ensured that one of the components there, one of the objectives was to ensure that we create the Judo for Peace. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, the commission that uh, looks at our colleagues, the refugees. Uh, I always say that uh, we are all potential refugees. And as such, today when we are not refugees, we help to, we need to help our colleagues. Yes. You know, when they, our colleagues are running away from their countries of origin, these uh, countries of uh, conflicts, uh, it's not only by wars, but also we have a lot of people who are internally displaced mm -hmm. within their uh, countries. So what we did in 2017 was to move into Maheba refugee camp mm -hmm. and ensured that we established ourselves there as a first fashion association in Zambian sport to establish itself in a refugee settlement. Wow. Uh, and uh, through the partnership of our colleagues, the International Judo Federation, Judo for Peace Directorate, and the Norwegian Olympic and Paralympic and Sports Confederations, mm -hmm. NIF, uh, together with our resources, uh, our Minister of Community Development, we worked together and ensured that we establish, actually we built a judo hall. So wow. our refugees have a place where they can go and do judo. Mm -hmm. Judo, we believe that it can help our colleagues to recover from the trauma. Remember yes. when these people are running from their countries, they face a lot of challenges. They've witnessed their sisters, their mothers being raped in their presence. Mm -hmm their fathers, their brothers, their, 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 their relatives being murdered in their presence. And this now uh, uh, coupled with the, the distance that they walk, they don't drive, they walk. Most of them have interacted with colleagues from Burundi, from Rwanda, walked through Congo, Angola, and to, into okay. Zambia, yeah. and to mm -hmm. Maheba. So I think we felt duty bound that we have to help such. As we are practicing judo as a therapy, then we provide necessities mm -hmm. like food and clothes to them. So I think uh, judo for peace is a component that we feel as a sports movement that we can give back to society. Community, yes. Not only in Zambia are we practicing this, we have uh, activities running in Afghanistan, we have activities running at the border of Syria and uh, Lebanon. Mm -hmm. We have activities running in Malawi, in Mzaleka refugee camp. And also, of course, in South Africa, we have the town refugees. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not only stopping at uh, Maheba. We are thinking of extending 
our project in Mayukwayukwa, and we've promised the nation and our refugees that uh, come November, a dojo will be complete wow. in Mayukwayukwa, even amid this COVID-19 uh, challenges. And we've also uh, start with the uh, Commissioner for Refugees, mm -hmm. uh, very understanding man, Mr. Mawele, that uh, we are moving into Luapula. You know, that's why we have also a challenge. I think government has a challenge with our colleagues. All those that are running from Burundi, Rwanda, and the Congo, I think there is influx mm -hmm. of our colleagues there. So we think that through the sport of judo, we can uh, provide that help to them. Well, well, and uh, the judo, I come now to the judo for the world. Yes. Judo for the world is, uh, I remember when I, was, I started judo, and uh, I was a supposed to buy the judogi, very expensive, mm -hmm. and uh, very few places where you can go and do because you need the tatami, which yes. is the mat, those yeah, mats we mm -hmm. use. And uh, when I inquired from my colleague from Europe, he said, judo is only for the rich. If you are poor, you can't do judo <laughs> because you need a strong, uh, of course, internationally approved geese. Yes. It's not like the correct geese we use. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, the judo geese are special and expensive. The judo mats, again, are very different from the martial arts mat mm -hmm. we use or mm -hmm. the taekwondo mats. Them, they are specially made and they're expensive and you only get them in Japan, Europe, Asia. That's where you can only have these. So uh, this also, we pushed through the International Judo Federation mm -hmm. and uh, through the Judo for Peace Directorate, we have another component where we say the judo for, this judo for the world is judo for the poor. The judo for our colleagues who have uh, uh, different uh, abode that can, in, like we've studied in Zambia, the Judo of the World program. Yeah. We are in Kanyama, we are in Garen, we are in Chibolia. You go to our colleagues with the, what different abode, you realize that uh, they are 15 years old, they are 12 years old, and they've never been in town. Because the parents... They've never been to the town, town center. Just the town center, the business center. And they're in Kanyama. Yes. This is because of their, their, their different tables. Yes. And uh, their parents, of course, don't allow them. Parents feel shame. Their community feel shame that they gave birth to such uh, uh, friends. So we came in as judo and said, no, 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 no. This, we need to create the judo for the world. Mm -hmm. Judo for all. Regardless of your gender, regardless of your race, your religion, your background, your athletic ability, we have to do this, and this is what we've done. And when you see these kids, we, we purchased a bus, the, yellow, the, yes. the popular yellow bus, mm -hmm. and uh, its duty is to ferry them from their homes to the judo centers and back to their homes. And then you can see the smiles, the excitement, excitements of these kids you know, having that feel that uh, they are part of uh, society. Oh, wow. So this is the judo for the world. And basically this is also, I can call it judo for the underprivileged. Those kids that cannot afford to pay to go to join any sports activity. Mm -hmm. the judo for the world is there to provide free judo lessons. We give them instructors that teach them free without paying anything. Mm -hmm. So judo is for everyone, regardless of your ability, oh, wow. regardless of your religion, regardless of your uh, uh, background. Somewhere in mid-April, uh, Mr. Foloko, this year, you said uh, Zambia Judo has always been known as an association that talks less, but do more works on the ground. And obviously what we have just described is a demonstration of, uh, of your stand two months ago. Uh, well done. Now, uh, since the outbreak of COVID-19, um, sport has not been spared, like you have said in your introduction. Uh, Talker 2020 has been postponed. Sports activities everywhere were suspended. The entities in Zambia, like the OIDC, was technically closed. And... Um, Despite that it does only developmental kind of sport and mass participation, non-competitive sport, how to technically close, what COVID-related activities or COVID-related impact have you observed among elite athletes, especially those, those that are bound for, 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 for Tokyo now 2021? Uh, thank you very much. Um, 
Yeah, before I answer the COVID question, I just want to add on what actually, when we say, uh, we, talk we, we talk less <laughs> do more. and do more. Uh, I want the nation to understand that uh, uh, when we joined the judo, I think uh, there are a lot of hurdles that we, we faced. Mm. And um, from our eight-year strategic plan, what came in there was also the capacity building of our administrators, capacity building of our coaches, and how we we, 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 we work on the elite athletes uh, and also uh, excellence, athletes of excellence. Yeah. Uh, we realized actually that um, we were failing, not only judo, I think this is a challenge with all our sports disciplines in mm -hmm. Zambia. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen a lot of crying fouls. I remember that, that year uh, we named someone Dilamba in football. <laughs> <laughs> because we're failing us to to qualify to the World Cup. Yes. I, uh, that memory is still fresh in my mind. And uh, when, we, when we started as judo, we thought, I think this is the challenge we need to tackle. And I realized that all sports disciplines, when we go to the Africa Games, to the Commonwealth Games, even to our regional games, people always complain on biased uh, uh, technical officials. Yes. So I think if we, you can't beat them, you have to join them. Mm -hmm. So what we did with judo through our ACE structure development plan was to ensure that uh, we engage the International Federation and we started uh, our course. This is the education of our uh, technical officials and uh, administrators. And uh, the, there is what we call now as the International uh, judo federation academy mm -hmm. the academy uh, to put it simple to our viewers is that uh, we have what we call now like uh, if you want to be licensed in uh, football like fifa a fifa b mm -hmm. so that license now in judo in africa it started in zambia not yes. for zambia for the entire africa mm -hmm. and i'm glad that I, yeah. i'm so, hosting it yes of course <laughs> uh, uh, ydc is uh, hosting that and uh, we went further also to start uh, grading our referees. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the first time in the history of judo, our referee was part of the officials that were present during the Africa Games in Morocco. Oh, really? Yeah. And Who was of course, that? Uh, Malambo. Malambo. She's ah, a female, yes, of course. Yes, I know her. I know yes. her. Wonderful. She was uh, part of the highly trained officials that were uh, selected by the International Federation to officiate at the All Africa Games. So I know uh, you may wonder, but these uh, if you have more of your technical officials in the continental or regional bodies, I think this also helps the athletes. Mm -hmm. Actually, it gives you advantages mm -hmm. for you to know the do's and don'ts of the sport yes. or the game or the mm -hmm. competition. Mm -hmm. So the, there are no issues of uh, we didn't know about this. They changed the rules when they were there because you, you were in the boardroom making these rules yourselves. So these are, I think, some of the achievements that we've done in terms of technical and administration. In administration also, we've built the capacity of our administrators uh, in the partnership with the Simmels, uh, oh, now Budapest University, of course, formerly Simmels University, by ensuring that uh, each and every um, executive member is enrolled in the judo management course, mm -hmm. a diploma in sports management. We have two different uh, levels. We have the administration one and the scientific one. So. The scientific one, of course, uh, touches issues of uh, sports science. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think these are the things that we've done that we believe as judo that if we, this can be done by our colleagues in other sports federations, uh, these will, issues of uh, many challenges our federations are facing in Zambia mm -hmm. will be the thing of the past. Mm -hmm. So we've covered all areas. And of course, if you don't uh, train your coach, you don't expect to have uh, good athletes. Our athletes, uh, and most of them now, you may wish to know that uh, in the different sports disciplines, our athletes are now out of the country, others are in the Olympic centers, mm -hmm. and they're being trained by high-level coaches. So for this athlete to come back to our country and be coached by a local coach who has never been exposed to such high-level uh, performance, it becomes a problem. Yes. So this in judo we've tackled by ensuring that uh, the courses that are being done by the Olympic coaches are the same courses uh, or qualifications, are the same qualifications our local coaches mm. have attained.
Absolutely. And uh, coming to COVID, this, like I've said, I think it has really affected our athletes. That uh, all of them, because uh, it's not a secret that uh, after the cancellation or the moving, the postponement of the the games, uh, by the way, they are still called the Tokyo 2020, 2020. Yeah. even in 2021, even if, we still yes. call them uh, Tokyo 2020 games. Mm -hmm. uh, the games were not only postponed, but also uh, there was cancellation of all activities of our athletes. All our athletes were confined into their homes. Mm. Uh, this has really affected. I know we have to do a lot of uh, psyching in terms of uh, how we move on uh, with the announcement of His Excellency yesterday that uh, uh, July we need to get back mm -hmm. on the field of play. Mm -hmm. But there will be a lot of... Uh, uh, scientific issues that must come to play. We need a, we need a lot of help from uh, our colleagues to ensure that we work together. It's not uh, only about coaching, science is about uh, our psychologists. <coughs> I know we are doing something with uh, Dr. Chipande to ensure that uh, we know how science can play mm -hmm. a vital role mm -hmm. in, in, in our athletes. But also, it's not that everything that uh, uh, has come to harm you is bad. Uh, I've learned a lot from the book of uh, The Great Rule of Dubai mm -hmm. in his book, The Title of My Story. So uh, as bad as COVID is, I think this also has given us a chance as the national federations, as the Olympic movement, to ensure that uh, even those athletes that uh, failed to qualify, we have a chance now. Yeah. Remember uh, if it is not with the fear of the second wave of the pandemic, mm -hmm. by September, most of the international federations had indicated that uh, they wanted to resume the qualifiers, actually, mm -hmm. including the international uh, championships. Mm -hmm. So uh, by July, if we start, with the COVID pandemic in place, I hope and I trust and believe that most of our federations will take advantage of this. Absolutely. To ensure that we qualify more athletes to the games. That will be We've done well, but amid this COVID, we don't know uh, how uh, FAS is dealing with our qualified uh, women goes, team. Yeah. Yes, they can give those instructions, but we don't know what they're doing at home. Mm -hmm. That's why it is important that uh, even if they are there, but the presence of the coach is very important. Mm -hmm. We have our three boxers who made history yes. by outclassing the African opponents and mm -hmm. ensure that we have three. We sent three and three qualified. Mm -hmm. But uh, between the COVID and the now, we 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 can't uh, we can't guarantee their fitness. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we are working on. Where the judoka actually was about to qualify, Stephen Mungandu by now would have qualified. He was based in France at our International Judo Federation Olympic Training Center. He was doing fine. He gave Zambia uh, a bronze medal from the uh, International Judo Federation Open Championship in Yaoundé, Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And as he was about to qualify, the COVID thing came in. Yeah. So uh, he has been training from the comfort of his home. But is the fitness same with the no, it environment that he had in France? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. But we are also thinking that also this period, qualifying period, I think gives an impetus to the association and the Steven, the technical bench, to sit down and plan and ensure that the uh, remaining qualifiers are well planned for. And uh, remember that the IOC has also given further funding to those that have already qualified and those that are about to qualify. Mm -hmm. Just uh, listen to also ANOCA, the associations of Olympic committees also gave funding to ANOCA, which is the Association of African Olympic Committees, yes. uh, for the preparation and also the issue of COVID-19, to tackle the issue of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So we believe as an NOC and as judo that uh, despite the dark cloud that COVID has put on us, still we have a chance to
to rise up as an uh, Olympic and uh, sport movement. And uh, uh, show actually the, the, the world that uh, the changes of COVID through sport yeah. uh, and nothing can be defeated. Absolutely. Not too long ago, before I go to the next question, uh, Brighton Chomba, Secretary General of Boxing, I believe, says, that's the way to go, Mr. President. People need first-hand information. Thank you, Mr. Chomba, for watching. And everyone of you that, uh, that is following us on social media as well as on this TV station. And not too long ago, uh, President, his Excellency, the President of Zambia, Mr. Edgar Lungu, directed that wearing of face masks in public should be mandatory. How has Zambia Judo Association responded to this directive? Uh, thank you very much. Actually, when we started with the reusable masks following the instructions of His Excellency, mm -hmm. we thought that would just be a judo affair. Yeah. And uh, using our own personal resources, we went out and uh, ensured that we made this, uh, we made uh, available the reusable masks to our athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, as we encourage them to train from their from the comfort of their homes, and ensured that uh, they stay home safe, we said, you know, let's also uh, provide some reusable masks. And when that, I think, was witnessed through social media. Our partners, the Norwegian Olympic and Paralympic Committee, said, oh, it's a good idea you've started. I think we can join you. Mm -hmm. So they also brought in the resources. And uh, we had our, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Anakamula, who saved Zambia some 10 years ago. Uh, the wife from Japan also saw what we were doing. And yes. they sent what we are calling the second-hand clothes. Actually, they're not second-hand clothes. They are brand new clothes that they they also sent to help to, 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 to judo so that we can give our athletes, especially the underprivileged. And uh, later we saw the International Judo Federation coming on board to support. Mm -hmm. There was a campaign now, international campaign, uh, spearheaded by the International Judo Federation head director for Judo for Peace, Mr. Nicolas Messner from mm -hmm. France, uh, where he has been raising uh, resources for us. And that has been uh, enough resources where we saw that this cannot only be the judo affair. So we've extended this affair to all other federations that are in need of reusable masks. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what we've done. So we are distributing these uh, reusable masks to federations, not only federations, but also communities. Yes. Uh, we had a request from His Royal Highness Chief Chamula the range of speaking people that he, he needs reusable masks in uh, schools. So we delivered to him. And uh, a senior chief magod of uh, the Ngoni and the Tumbuka mm -hmm. speaking people of uh, mm -hmm. uh, Londazi, he also made a request and we traveled to, to Londazi to his palace where we donated some reusable masks and also schools around his chiefdom were at Egg Chicken yeah. Primary School <laughs> to... Uh, uh, issue this uh, and the further uh, we crossed the border. Yeah, I, the request, I, I saw that in Malawi, we, right? We, we request we, we, our colleagues from Malawi Judo Federation said, hey, we are doing the judo for refugees. We have also refugees in Malawi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we said, okay, these uh, boundaries are, we are just given to us by the colonial masters. Mm -hmm. We are one. Yes. It's, uh, Northern Odisha and Yastalan. So mm -hmm. we are one. So we went to the border where we uh, contributed some reusable masks, hand washing, and uh, of course, uh, hand sanitizers to our colleagues in Malawi, mm -hmm. which will be used at uh, Mzaleka refugee camp. Uh, it's not only the reusable masks that we are providing. Actually, we have also uh, produced some brochures that we are using on uh, uh, COVID education. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also uh, bought some for our judo clubs. We've also bought some hand basin uh, dishes to use for washing. Yes. Uh, like I've said, we are providing hand sanitizers. We are providing uh, 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 hand washing. Yeah, soap itself. Soap yes. itself. Yeah. So all these things we we thought these are things that can help us to fight the COVID. Mm -hmm. And even as the pronouncement by His Excellency that we need to put things in place, more especially to see which uh, sport will, will commence in July, 
I think as judo we are ready because all our clubs have been provided with the masks, the hand washing basins and the mm -hmm. hand sanitizers. Absolutely. Yeah. I hear that, uh, confirm if this is true, uh, that some of the masks that you are distributing were made by people in Maheba refugee camp. Is it true? Yes, thank you very much. Initially, our idea was that we should allow our refugees to give us these masks. Uh, during our few resources that we raised at Zambia Judo, yes, it was possible. Mm -hmm. But now a challenge came in because remember we are dealing with international organizations. Yes. So as we receive funds from the Norwegian Olympic Committee, and if these are NOLA funds, and the International Judo Federation, it means our funds have to be audited. Yes. So even the issues of who should make the masks mm -hmm. changes immediately. Mm -hmm. It means we have to subject ourselves to the uh, tender procedures. So uh, a company was selected based on the uh, information that was provided to mm -hmm. us by mm -hmm. other companies, and the company was picked. However, we further went to encourage this company that... Uh, supply of masks to that company must come from the underprivileged. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, this is not only my but everyone now, those that uh, we see, more especially uh, the women, uh, those who are taking care of uh, orphan orphans from orphanages, we want to ensure that uh, the resources benefits the underprivileged. So those are the people that apply masks to, to the company that was awarded to supply the masks to us. Wonderful. Yes. If you have any question for Mr. Foloko, please, there's a phone number on your screen. I know that uh, the information is flowing very seamlessly right now. And how I wish we just went on the discussions without uh, phone calls. But we need to hear from you. We need to hear your questions, and, um, especially those of you that are watching us from the sporting communities and those uh, from communities that uh, enjoy sport, even if you don't, uh, you don't play sport. Alternatively, please uh, find my name on uh, Facebook. And you will see this broadcast live from Prism Africa Litovia TV. And you can make your comment in the comment section there, or you can ask a, a, a question. Um, President, I, I know the example that you have given about crossing the borders, uh, judo being uh, uh, border insensitive. You, you crossed the boundaries into Malawi and uh, did this very important uh, donation. Uh, is, is this possible if, let's say, uh, Mozambique or Congo asked you can do the same as well? Yes, of course. Um, we are very sensitive to the fact that, uh, you know, some uh, athletes or parents they don't want their children to use the reusable masks. Mm -hmm. Others prefer the so-called modern masks. Uh, but if we are requested, like uh, where I'm sitting, where I'm seated, uh, Zimbabwe Judo Federation has already requested that oh. we, we help them and wow. they, who deliver, mm -hmm. that will deliver. Wonderful. And also uh, there are some chiefdoms that have requested. I have uh, the Royal Highnesses in Luapla where you will see a Sunni donating mm -hmm. and some Royal Highnesses in uh, a Western province. So we'll be going to their chiefdoms and uh, donate these important uh, items. Jula is very critical and uh, we are very much arrived to that uh, warning from His Excellency. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the coldest time of our uh, country. And I know Jula is very critical. So we will not uh, even celebrate the opening of the uh, sport. We have to take uh, uh, critical measures that will ensure that uh, our athletes are safe in the month of July. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think this is not only the warning from His Excellency, but these are issues that we are seeing world over. The World Health Organization is warning us, and uh, as a citizen, I think we have to take uh, these matters critically and ensure that uh, we safeguard the lives of our athletes. So I'm happy to mention that uh, the last person to have won an Olympic medal for Zambia in 1996, Samuel Matete, is watching us right now and is waving at you. <laughs> um, we are heading towards the end of the program, sir. Um, what word of encouragement would you say to other national federations uh, during this uh, period of COVID-19, even if they are not really under NOC? Uh, thank you very much. Actually, where I'm seated, I'm um, troubled 
because uh, I have not heard anything on the package of uh, on any package that the the federations will, will receive mm -hmm. uh, due to the impact of the COVID-19. Uh, we have a new board at the National Sports Council of Zambia, yes, uh, which has not yet been uh, inaugurated by the Honorable Minister of Sport. Uh, I'm looking forward to a situation where the board is inaugurated and uh, we pose these questions to them. We see, because um, it's a challenging period, not only for anyone mm -hmm. who's in business, us at uh, the same at OIDC, uh, it's, uh, it's a challenging period, but I'd like to see what uh, package. I saw our colleagues, the artists, yes. received something yesterday. Absolutely, uh, 30 million. <laughs> uh, it's a well-deserved a well yeah. uh, package. Mm, they do a lot. But I, I would like to see that package also. I've seen the package for the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, but remember, we have a directorate of youth and a directorate of sport. Yes. I would like also to see the directorate of sport receiving that package, which should go to help our national uh, federations and associations mm -hmm. we, we, we within the country. For now, I ask them to remain resilient, remain steadfast, and ensure that as we open in July, please let's place the health of our athletes first. Mm -hmm. They're the reason why we exist. And uh, we have to ensure that uh, we engage our international federations. Yes. I know as a country we may be struggling with the resources, but as long as we're in a good standing with our international Federations, resources are variable. In the same way the International Judo Federation has made these resources available to Judo in Zambia, it's possible that any other association or federation in Zambia can receive the same help from their international mm -hmm. federation. So the only magic there is to be in good standing with your international federation. Yes. And of course, uh, I urge also my colleagues, the sports leaders, to ensure that uh, we vie for these positions in uh, continental bodies and the regional bodies, yeah. because there are benefits that comes. It gives a lot of opportunities a lot and of access opportunities, to resources, of course. right? Of course. Mm -hmm. So as a president of the region, uh, I want this also to extend, as you all know, the viewership is only not limited to Zambia, mm -hmm. to encourage my colleagues within the Sadaka region, within the Africa Union Sports Council Region 5 uh, region, to ensure that uh, we remain relevant to our judo values. Uh, society must know that there was judo during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. So like I've said, if we cannot play sport now, uh, judo is about uh, what we do on the mat, which we call it tatami, mm -hmm. is only 40%. The other 60% is what we do after leaving the mat. So judo, the way of life is about what contribution I give to society. And uh, that way a judoka will be remembered that during the pandemic, the yellow bus, we saw the yellow bus in the rewards mm -hmm. of Zambia, the remotest parts of Zambia, we saw the yellow bus coming to give masks to us. So this goes to my colleagues around the region to say let's remain relevant during this period and ensure that uh, we help society. Sir, thank you so much. I've had Mr. Alfred Foloko, president of NOC, also president of Zambia Judo Association, very actively involved in the management of sport on the African continent. This has been coronavirus and you. Even if we are going to say bye, please, this video, the coded video, you can still find it on YouTube and Facebook. You can post your questions there. Mr. Foloko is tagged on this and he will be very happy to answer you. Until you, you see us again next week, hopefully with another interesting topic as interesting as this one. Please, your health is your choice. Take care. Bye-bye.